Welcome to the KDB Review Podcast. I'm Andy Davis and this is episode 10 of season 8. That makes it the last episode of this season, but don't worry, we'll be back towards the end of July with season 9. And for this triumphant finale, I'm going to celebrate by talking about something thoroughly depressing, mortgages. Now, let's be honest, interest rates are going up and up, and as repayments go through the roof, people's willingness to fund their new kitchen or bath in this way is going down and down. So I'll be talking to friend of the show and very experienced mortgage expert Ian Swatton, and hopefully he'll be able to give us some light at the end of the tunnel. And if I'm feeling very nice and generous and don't run out of time, I might give you a little recap of season eight at the end of the show. So stick around for that. But first... Do you want to receive all the latest news, opinion, analysis and features from KBB Review twice a week? Of course you do, you're only human. You can subscribe to our newsletter and get it all delivered straight to your inbox every Tuesday and every Thursday. And if you already get it, then why not sign up everyone else in your business and beyond and they will thank you forever. All you have to do is go to kbbreview.com forward slash subscribe today. And here is our mortgage expert, Ian Swatton, as promised. Hello, Ian. Hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm very, very well. Thank you. It's very warm today up in the loft. For the record, because who knows what might happen and what might change before this comes out, we're recording this on Monday afternoon to go out on Thursday morning. So there's a few days in between recording it (laughs) and publishing it, and who the hell knows what's going to happen in between now and then. So look, for those that might not have heard you on our previous episodes, Ian, give us your credentials. So I'm Ian Swatton. I work or have been working in the mortgage industry for 35 years for my sins, so I've seen lots of ups and downs, and uh, I guess (laughs) very much which is a, a precursor for what we're going to be talking about today. Yes, I mean, look, mostly downs. Oh, well, da- downs in terms of number of people getting mortgages and ups in terms of uh, rates. Well, let's start there. Let's start with laying out the issue. I know it's a very broad question here, this, but can you set the scene for us from your perspective on where we are and what the issues might be for anyone looking to buy a house or to remortgage to fund refurbishments like a new kitchen or bathroom? I think what I'm saying here Ian, is basically what the hell's going on. Okay, right. Well, very good, uh, very good questions to start. Well, I think probably I can summarise where we are in a few words, I think we are, without un- trying to understate, in some very challenging times. What with inflation at very high levels, we have a war in Ukraine, the cost of living crisis, the aftermath of COVID, and all this is conspiring to coming together to creating a mortgage time bomb for many, and that's creating a real level of uncertainty within the market. From a positive point of view, there will be opportunities, but the headwinds at the moment are very strong, and we need to get through these challenging times really to see what the landscape is going to look thereafter. Can you give us some kind of historical perspective and context for this? Because I think lots of people listening to this who have been in business a long time will have seen you know, the credit crunch, market crashes, etc., etc. Are we anywhere near anything like that happening? You know, that is a really good question. And just in terms of putting some context behind some of the numbers I'm going to give you today, I'm going to do some comparisons between now and what they were pre-pandemic or back back to the uh, aftermath of the of the credit crunch back in sort of 2008 2009 there is no doubt that what we are seeing is a massive increase in the cost of living be that with people's day-to-day bills but also for mortgages in general there are around 1.4 million people coming off their fixed rates this next 12 months and those people probably just under two-thirds of those will uh, have seen rates of less than two percent or be on rates of less than two percent and they're rates that they'll be going on to will be around 5%. So they're seeing an increase in their mortgage interest rates of around two and a half times. We've never seen an increase in rates at that level over a relatively short space of time. The context to how as it was back in the day is that house prices today are also at historic highs. So although someone might be looking at a 5% interest rate and say, well, that's actually nothing near where I used to pay my rate at 15% where it was historically, but house prices weren't as high as they are today back in those times. So as a percentage of disposable income, mortgages for some people are getting close to historic highs. And that is the problem that we face. Right. So is this all just a symptom really of of having such ridiculously low rates for such a long protracted period? Because that in itself is was the anomaly, wasn't it? They've just been so low for such a long time. Is there a level of complacency to that, do you think? Complacency is probably a very, um, it's probably a very good word, but but it's maybe a bit unfair on people because we've got used to low rates, and although we have seen interest rates at historic levels, and we give people an idea of what their payments would be at let's say six percent, so a much bigger gap to what they're potentially used to. People have filled that gap with other spending, be that in discretionary spending on things like cars and holidays, or be that they've invested money in their homes. 
but the reality is that people have got used to very low rates for such a long uh, period of time and didn't really think that these were, the rates were ever going to end. And that, I guess, is where we've ended up now, with, that we've seen lots of other issues, spiralling inflation, cost of living increases coming together at a time when interest rates have gone up an extraordinary rate over such a short space of time. Yeah, I mean, some of the numbers surrounding this in terms of what a typical rise has been for someone coming out of a fixed rate are absolutely eye-watering. They are indeed. I mentioned 1.4 million people coming off rates this year alone, similar picture to next year. Just under two thirds of those are on rates of less than 2%. So for those people coming on to their new rates, as things stand today, and this isn't really with the impact of everybody so far, the average mortgage holder has seen their mortgage payments increase by £1,300 over a year. Now, if you combine that with increases in food costs, increasing utility costs, Suddenly, these people have got a a lot less disposable income to spend and in some cases may have no disposable income and may be in a negative situation. So it's very hard on people, right? And it's all relative, isn't it? Because even if you've got a very well-paid job, I mean, the kind of customers that we're talking about are people who might spend £30,000, £40,000 on a kitchen. It's all relative because of the mortgage you're paying on the size of the house you have. Absolutely. And these people potentially at the upper end, maybe the average house price is three to 400,000. That is significantly higher than what it was previously. Potentially their borrowing is going to be significantly higher. Therefore, any impact of interest rate increases is going to uh, impact on them potentially. So when I say that average of a £1,300 increase over a year on, on mortgage payments, that's a typical mortgage around 250,000. Well, there are lots of clients with mortgages three, four, five hundred thousand pounds. It's not untypical now. You know, if you take an average mortgage of around two hundred fifty thousand, that means there's a lot of people with their mortgages at a much higher level than that. And obviously, the impact is, is, is going to be that much greater on them as well. Yes, and we both live in Beckenham, where I don't know what you could buy for two hundred grand, but it wouldn't be very big. Not a lot. No, <laughs> couple, couple, couple of rooms probably. At the moment, one of them would be a toilet. Yes, indeed. Okay, so look for this market. You know, remortgages are incredibly important because a lot of uh, refurbishments are funded that way. I guess most of them will happen when someone comes to the end of a deal and gets a new one. That's probably when you might look to doing some extra borrowing. That might trigger the extra borrowing. But if you can't afford the repayments without adding any more on, you're unlikely to extend that in any way while the, the rates are the way that they are. Are there any signs that the remortgage market in particular is being drastically affected or indeed funding for home improvements as a subcategory of that? Actually, the remortgage market is the market which is mostly affected because the people that come off a rate now have got to do something. They either stay on their lender's standard variable rate, which is average around 7.7%, that sort of figure, or they remortgage onto a new rate. If it's a, typically a fixed rate, for example, be it a two-year or five-year rate, you'll look at an average of 5 or 6%. So there isn't much room to finance for additional borrowing, and that is the problem. The purchase market, so people buying new property, is very benign right now. There's a lot of wait and see, there's a lot of uncertainty, and that in itself has created a slowdown in the purchase market. So the mortgage market is very much reliant now for lots of its transactions on its, on its remortgages. But what you're not seeing is a great deal of people looking to increase their borrowing for home improvements specifically. They might be looking to increase their borrowing maybe to to cut some debt, i.e. consolidate some additional borrowing that they may already have, roll it into the mortgage to try and reduce their outgoings. But people are looking to try and mitigate their outgoings or reduce their outgoings rather than increase. So, So spending money on things like home improvements is probably secondary in people's thoughts to trying to reduce their overall monthly commitments in the first instance. Yeah, and that's obviously going to have a huge impact on people selling kitchens and bathrooms and anything else that goes into that market, particularly if you're looking at big chunks of money, which these things cost any kind of construction work, which this would fall under, is is never going to be cheap, is it? Is this one of those things where a lot of it's about confidence and uncertainty about what might happen next it suddenly which hasn't happened for the last however many years getting a mortgage feels a bit like a like a gamble it's like a should i or shouldn't i jump you know it's like that final decision seems to be the problem andrew you're absolutely right and we have this scenario right now where for a first time buyer uh, or someone that's looking to, to to find the get themselves onto the property ladder in some respects there's probably a no better time because house prices are starting to soften. There is ability to borrow money out there. Skip to more recently introduce 100% lending. So there is some confidence out there for people to borrow. Compared that to, well, if you wanted to, if you don't buy, you need to rent. Well, the rental market is is tight. There are very few properties out there to rent because the buy-to-let market is being squeezed. There are more landlords now starting to sell because 
government tax changes, etc. It doesn't work for those landlords. So you're seeing property being pulled out of the rental sector. Therefore, there's less pe- less property for people to, to rent. Therefore, an option is to buy. You're seeing pr- uh, prices soften, as I say. So there is an opportunity there. But at the moment, there is also that level of uncertainty that if you're a first-time buyer and you're going into making your first purchase, well, can you afford the, the mortgage payments? Now, the reality is at the moment is that mortgages in, in most places when you buy are still cheaper than renting. So that is a positive. So there is still a, a, an opportunity there. However, people need to uh, have properties to buy. And if you work up the chain, if people are uncertain, there will be some more properties come to market as, as landlords start to sell more and that maybe gains a bit more traction. But the housing market is pretty benign right now. The, the level of transactions aren't where they, where they used to be. So very much from the mortgage market point of view, it's been held up by IB mortgages, not purchase transactions, but those ex- transactions are still there. They're still to be had. And there is still some optimism that there are things out there that, and, and confidence that if house prices soften or start to go down, that, well, actually, there is a good time for, for first time buyers to buy. When you're talking to people who are looking to remortgage and are looking for some advice, what are the questions they're asking? What, what, are their, what are their biggest fears and concerns? Is it literally just how much it's going to cost them every month? Or is it about the value of the house, the investment in the property? What, what is their fears? Probably number one question is how much is my mortgage going to go up? So you know, how much more am I going to have to put aside? For most people, fortunately, it's about then adjusting their spending. What what can they drop? What can they afford to reduce to, to meet their mortgage outgoings? The next question is when will rates start to drop? When will rates start to come down? I, I have no idea when rates, you know, I can have a sense of um, what the experts well, good, say. That's my next question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, well, we'll come back to that. But that, that will be the question number two, when rates are going to come down. And thirdly, the thing that people really start to question is should I do a mortgage over a two-year term or should I do a mortgage over a five-year term typically? I mean, there are other terms available, but if you're two years, aren't they gambling, optimistic that rates will come down quite quickly and they want to take advantage of that? Or should they just get used to what their payments are going to be and not have to worry about it over the next five years? So those are probably the top three sort of questions I get asked. Yes, which makes perfect sense. I mean, I suppose what we're dealing with in this market here is people who already have probably some equity. Yes, of which they have a substantial amount of equity, given the way the housing market has operated over the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. It is about, for me, whether or not they choose to, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put it off for two years and we'll get another two-year deal. Or we'll put off that new kitchen for another five years and we'll get a five-year deal and see what happens on the other side. I think it's about putting off what it is they want to do rather than just abandoning it completely. That putting off actually is a challenge that a lot of clients are having because what we have seen uh, if you take the remortgage market particularly where people are rolling off their rates they can start looking at alternatives six or seven months out from when their product expires and you see some some people that that take a very sort of forward thinking approach and say right okay I'm the, I, it's happening in six months I need to do something about it now but there are as many clients who leave it to the last minute optimistic that something might happen and that wait and see approach very much seems to be the sense that you get from people is that they don't really want to make a commitment now be that changing rates or be that looking to spend more money and and that's where we are it's it seem, we seem to be a bit of a holding pattern right now people just waiting to see which way the the rates fall and or where the rates settle sorry hoping actually that they will fall sometimes just through blind optimism rather than anything else and i think that's that sense of wait and see holding pattern seems to be something that's creeping into the whole housing market right now yeah and it's certainly something that's in the in the kitchen and bathroom market as well that final hurdle thing seems to be the problem at the moment a lot of talk about the government needs to do something Right. And, you know, the Chancellor has called all the big lenders in, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, the government can't control interest rates. That's the Bank of England's job. What action can mortgage lenders take? Because obviously they want to keep lending money. That's how they make their living. So what actions can they take in this situation? Where do you start with this one? In the sense of what can they do to help distressed borrowers now? Well, they can do and have talked about putting measures in place to make it easier for people to help them, potentially extending the mortgage term or putting them onto interest only without any impact on their credit in, credit files, that sort of thing. But clearly that doesn't mean to say they can borrow any more. That is about people who are in a situation where they can't necessarily afford the mortgage they have at the moment and how they can get them through these difficult times. But you're absolutely right. How do you actually encourage people to borrow and how do you actually encourage people to borrow more and, and invest in their homes? Well, there is still the green agenda and that green agenda isn't going to go away, whether it's right for people right now, but the government or well, lenders are now starting to look more at green innovative products. Whether that is investing in a bathroom or in a, in a kitchen that's going to improve the EPC rating on their property, that's a different debate. But very much lenders are looking to encourage people to invest in their homes, to make 
make them more energy efficient because the the direction of travel going forward is that that very much is going to be a driver to marketability of properties you're already seeing that in the buy to let space so whether it is innovation product innovation through the green agenda that will help create additional lending help to buy has finished there is no replacement sorry Um, when you say product innovation do you mean incentivized rates Yes. So what you see is in product innovation, it could be encouraging people with lower rates. At the moment, those products tend to be driven by rewarding people who are buying an energy efficient home. But the debate around that is, well, actually, that's good for people who are buying an energy efficient home. But how do you encourage people to invest in homes to make them more energy efficient? And one way of doing that is by cheaper rates. So although you don't see those products right now, it wouldn't surprise me that over the coming quarters, the year or so, that you'll start to see that. So if you're prepared to invest in your home, you'll get rewarded. And you start, we're already starting to see lenders giving cashbacks to, to customers, or I think it's nationwide, are giving with a small, a small sample of their customers an incentivized cashback once the client has actually invested in the home. And you'll see more and more of that. that very much, the nationwide product is very much a test and see whether there is the appetite for it and whether that product is right. So anyone who sells windows, insulation, energy efficient appliances, bathrooms, kitchens, etc., are, are going to see the benefit of that. Absolutely. If the person that's selling those products can very much give a, a green angle, very much can identify what impact that investment will have on the efficiency of a home, because as lenders start to incentivize borrowers to invest in their homes to improve the energy efficiency, that to me is very much a, a key reason for people to want to borrow to buy those products. And there will be more product innovation to enable borrowers to do that, potentially on prefer, uh, preferential rates, reduced rates, albeit just some sort of grant, those sort of things. So although maybe being a bit vague at the moment, it's because there's not a huge number of those products around, but I am aware that there's a lot of talk about how do we invest in the housing stock to make it more energy efficient. And those long-term goals that the government have won't necessarily be swayed by short-term issues in the in the mortgage market. That's a huge bit of insight, I think, for, for people who sell kitchens and bathrooms here. When, when the market is dropping and people aren't willing to commit any kind of incentive that makes them go, yes, I'll do it now, and to invest in the kind of products that you're talking about, which is desperately needed, I think that is a slither of good news in what is particularly an awful conversation, Ian. <laughs> and I, I guess I said at the beginning that there are opportunities, and I see that very much as one of, yeah. the, job, one of, one of the strong opportunities that the housing and mortgage industry has in the coming years because there will be people that will want to invest in their homes because of energy efficiency. When it helps to reduce the cost of their homes, you see in the buy-to-let market now that renters, people renting the property, uh, those properties need to be an EPCC or better, which means that the landlord has to invest in those uh, in their homes. And energy efficiency could be windows, it could be appliances, all those sorts of things. So absolutely. What you've also seen, however, is with the buy-to-lets is that a lot of landlords are exiting the market because although those changes are, are positive, the government is also penalising the landlords in terms of the taxation. So on the one hand, they give, but on the other hand, they take away. So a lot of landlords are just giving up with it because they find it too too difficult. However, there is still a lot of landlords, they all have to invest in their homes either way. So Okay, so broadly speaking, here's the 64,000% question. What do you think is going to happen next? What is your view, the view of mortgage watching professionals, like you say, on, on what happens from this point on? What's going to happen for the rest of 2023, do you think? Looking at the house prices and what the experts are saying about house prices, predictions by people like Savills, Knight Frank, Capital Economics, reckon that house prices will be lower in 2023, 2024 than they were previously, but still above where they were pre-pandemic. That gives a level of context so that although we will see an adjustment in house prices, they'll still be worth uh, levels higher than we uh, than they were pre-pandemic levels. But the experts are also predicting that the high rates will remain for the rest of this year, probably into 2024, but maybe start to come down towards the second half of 2024. So I think we have these headwinds for the next year or so, but people are resilient, people will adjust. And I, I've, I've seen that in terms of talking to people myself, where there's a level of acceptance of where we are, people adjust to it, and then go back to where they where they were. So I think that we, we're in for a level of uncertainty for the rest of this year, with some improvements probably in the middle towards the end of 2024.
And as you say, there might be some innovative products and stuff put out into the market before then. Yes. Just to try and stimulate things uh, a little bit more. But it's always fantastic and interesting to talk to you, if not depressing. You must be a barrel of laughs at a dinner party. Yeah, um, I certainly am. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, it's, look, it's obviously incredibly important, and it really has a massive effect on the success of lots of people who listen to this. So uh, thank you so much for that bit of insight. And as always, I'll be back in touch with you to prove you wrong or right with your predictions next time. Thanks so much, Andrew. That was our resident mortgage expert, Ian Swatton. And, well, let's be honest, it wasn't great news, was it? But at least there seems to be a little light at the end of the tunnel, even if that tunnel ends in 2024. Patience, more than ever, is a virtue. That's it for Season 8. We'll be back at the end of July for Season 9. And don't forget that you can subscribe to our KBB Review newsletter, which will come straight to your inbox every Tuesday and Thursday. Simply go to kbbreview.com forward slash subscribe. I'll see you next time for Season 9. Oh, yes, though. I promised a little recap of Season 8, didn't I? Well, how about we do it a little differently? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So if Magnet's so great, why are you here? So if Magnet's so great, why are you here? Reflowing in that phantasmagorical building shapes. Phantasmagorical. I'm so glad to be here. We've had a lot of clients go, okay, just do your thing. Just do your thing. dumped on their patio that looks a little bit of an eyesore in their top end house. A beautiful space to be able to entertain and enjoy. A beautiful space. Absolutely love it. If the plans from a, a national, I feel almost that my conscience is clear and I just <laughs> I'll just wade in and do whatever I, do whatever I can. Absolutely love it. I've always been interested in food. I've always liked barbecue and outdoor in general. 10 photos, 10 videos, 10 graphics. Let the world decide what's good and what's not. Let the world decide what's good and what's not. Absolutely love it. I'm a big fan of baked potatoes. It's got to be a classic, it's butter and cheese. Cheese and coleslaw. I'm a big fan of baked potatoes. Let's go to tuna mayo. Absolutely love it. Tuna and sweet corn with mayo and mustard. Salted Welsh butter and homemade coleslaw. Just do your thing. Plain, straightforward beans. I'm a big fan of baked potatoes.